Hello and welcome back. And before we start today's video, one moment. Today I want to talk about the Unify new UPS tower device. Right now Unify have started rolling out two new UPS devices. One in tower form like this one and a rack mount 2U version. Now this one is the 10 mains output 1000 VA 600 watt desktop UPS. It's pretty compact there and right now it is supplying power to an 8 bay rack mount 2U NAS solution. It is connected here to a Synology DS425 Plus and it is using connecting via a 10 gig PoE switch also supporting a UNAS 2. All of these devices, their mains power either directly or indirectly are running through this UPS tower device. Now, talking about a UPS, you may be looking for one of these in your office, you may be looking for one of them for home, but I think we all have to agree that UPSs are super, super dull. And a lot of the time, a UPS trying to talk about it in an exciting format is going to be tough. So rather than go with the traditional review format here, where we're gonna go into a lot of detail, instead, we're gonna give you five reasons why this UPS definitely deserves a place in your Unify ecosystem, or even a non-Unify ecosystem, but I'm also gonna give you five reasons why you might wanna give it a mess. It's a classic five by five that we've done before. So let's crack on with number one. So straight away, the one thing I really like about this UPS, as we disconnect the power once again, is the size of it. I know it looks like a 1970s radiator and you can probably hear that humming noise for when I disconnected the power there, but the measurements of this device are pretty darn compact. Measuring it around 28 centimeters by 10 centimeters by 28 centimeters, the device only weighs around eight kilograms. UPSs are famously very, very heavy indeed. This manages to fit quite a lot in in such a compact frame, although it is again a 600 what PSU there. Now, this is one of the first two devices they are rolling out. I will also highlight that they have made it abundantly clear that they're going to be expanding in this series pretty quickly. Uh, a statement they are going to be going uh, for pure sine wave uh, models, as well as ones that are going to be taking advantage of lithium uh, batteries internally there. And I will talk about it a little bit more later on in the video. But at least in terms of the design and the deployment, I can't really fault it in terms of scale. Also, I'm gonna say, in terms of connectivity out the gate, it's not too shabby either. Here on the rear, we have got five individual surge and battery supplying ports here. And on the other side, we have five standard surge protected ports. Keep in mind that only five of those ports are gonna be supported by that internal battery there inside. Uh, there at the bottom, we've got that mains input. We've also got a couple of uh, network surge in and out ports. And of course, there at the top, we've got our network monitoring connection there, which is what allows the UPS network and the connected devices to receive that pulse to let them know that the mains power has failed and that they should safely shut down. Of course, that will change from system to system. Now, heat on this UPS isn't actually too bad. As we make our way to the very top there, you can see the ventilated panel and some of the air being used. Effectively, this is the fan pushing out that warm air but there are ventilation panels on either side at both the top and the bottom. But the temperature there is sitting around 45 to 47 degrees. And again, this is after a 24 hour period. Now to put that heat into a little bit of perspective there as we bring it around, we're able to see there on the table, the UNAS2. And behind it, we can see the 10 gig switch and the Synology NAS behind that. Again, you can see pretty much this UPS is largely unnoticeable in terms of its temperature there. And if we bring it around to the ports on the, on the rear of this device and take a good look at those, we're able to see the heat generation around the network port sitting around 30 and there the way, all the way down, pretty much nothing much to worry about my leg there at the bottom. Again, for a little bit of perspective about heat generation. So overall, for such a compact UPS, I'm actually kind of impressed that the heat levels are as low as they are. Another thing for those of you that are concerned about e-waste, I will highlight, and don't do this at home, I wouldn't recommend ever doing this while it's at mains power, but you can remove this panel here to reveal inside there a removable battery panel inside. So at the very least, you don't have to worry too much if that battery there starts to lose its efficiency there, something that you can monitor from the Unify control panel there uh, via your network manager, and from there you can figure out if the battery needs replacement. 
And as mentioned, this device is incredibly easy to set up, getting it directly connected into whatever your primary uh, Unify network manager is there, or even if you just integrate it like I did via a third party switch, you're still able to set it up, connect it and get it picked up very, very easily. So realistically, this device is trading on its simplicity. I know I've talked about the scale a little bit already, but the simplicity of integrating a Unify UPS into a Unify ecosystem. So hopefully there's a camera on the rear of the screen. I've already connected several devices as already discussed, but really it just comes down to this. I've got a network cable here that's running into that 10G switch. You then connect it into the network monitoring port on the rear of the UPS. Here on the table, I've got here on uh, the Unify site manager on screen here. So we just wait for that to be recognized there on the available devices. I'll refresh that page. And right there at the bottom is our UPS tower. We just click on that and then we click adopt device. And that's really more than half of the way in. From there, it will then get adopted into my wider Unify network. And then from there, we can start pairing devices using the network management there to connect our Unify devices easily. Now, once the device has been successfully paired, you'll be able to monitor the battery level and have a good look at exactly what is happening with those battery and surge and simple surge connected ports. If I was going to take advantage of the surge in and out with the network connectivity there on the bottom, that option is available to me. And from here, I can monitor the battery level as well as the power utilization and just general identity of the device on my local area network. And again, everything from you know, nods and notifications and information about the system went in operation, whether I want to set up those NUT server uh, options there to allow me to ping third party devices with the UPS, it's all manageable there. And then from there, you can go ahead and start adding other unified devices via the GUI there. Now, in order to enable safe shutdown pairing, you are going to have to use the credentials for each of your devices. So whether that is something as high-end as a Dream Machine or other NAS devices, you are going to have to pair them in one by one in order for the UPS to send a relevant signal to those devices for them to shut down safely. And as far as pricing goes, as you probably aren't going to be that surprised, Unify have tried to go quite competitive here at the time of recording. Although I don't have a precise uh, price, it does look like it's going to be arriving at a little under $175 for the desktop model and under $299 for that larger scale rack mount model there, at least in terms of physical presence. Now, as Unify expand out into this portfolio, there's going to be other bells and whistles they're going to uh, enter into. And this is very much going to be the cost effective no frills option there's no lcd or anything on the front as mentioned some of the features and facilities that aren't on that i'm going to be talking about in the second half of this video uh, aren't present here but at least as far as that price point it's not you know bare bones cheap but it's also not extraordinarily expensive extraordinarily expensive either and i will also highlight something i've talked about in other videos as well that i've never been a big fan of their whole redundant power backup thing i've never really been a huge fan of uh, this secondary non-ups device that was really just one redundant power supply shared by a bunch of other devices and i have always wondered why the brand wasn't quicker to jump on board with um uh, ups devices like this one but at the very least now they're integrating more now solutions into the market this for me couldn't come out at a better time particularly now we're seeing more devices like these where abject power failure is significantly more damaging at least in terms of real world irreplaceable data also, even if you're not running a Unify NAS or a Unify network, you can still take advantage of a lot of the features and facilities thanks to its support of Network UPS Tools, or NUT, meaning that you can take advantage of this UPS inside something like a Synology. As long as it has Network UPS support, you're able to bind these two together, create um, authentication um, credentials on the tower system, and then allow it to connect with your third party device in order for it to shut down safely. I love the build quality. I like the design and the aesthetic blending into the rest of the Unify environment. And although it is only their first release into an ex expanding series of devices, I think they've nailed it right down there in the middle in terms of simplicity and affordability. However, we have to be realistic. 
this is not the perfect UPS for everyone, and although a lot of the criticisms I'm about to come up with will no doubt be resolved as they expand this portfolio more into other UPS devices for different profiles and different deployments, we have to talk about the things about this that it lacks or either the UPS systems as a general range right now do not offer to you, the consumer, at least now at the time of recording. So let's go through those five things which I think this could stand to do a little bit better on. In order to show this off a little better, let's disconnect this again and get this turned around for you. You can see it does with that humming noise you can hear kick in immediately and get picked up. But on the rear of this device, one of the things that really bums me out that there's no USB connectivity. Now again, I'm gonna to have to keep repeating myself, no doubt these are things that will get ironed out as the range expands, but at least in terms of this device, the lack of a UPS here, uh, a USB port on this UPS means that simple USB heartbeat triggering of um, power down safely protocol there on a third party device is absent here. I get why they probably didn't integrate it given a lot of their systems don't even use USB, but at least in terms of deployment in third party operational environments, the lack of USB on this is disappointing. Another thing that's a little disappointing and I get the reason for it, is the lack of a PoE output on this. Now we've got network connectivity, it clearly has a network control in here in order to facilitate and work within an existing network environment, but given the preponderance of PoE devices in the portfolio of Unify, I'm surprised they didn't factor in the means to supply PoE failover for some lower profile devices. Now I get it, like not everyone's gonna use it and some PoE devices like this PoE NAS are gonna need much more sophisticated network management than a UPS can provide, but not all. Uh, you, uh, PoE devices from Unify are that complicated or at least that network complicated. They've already gone and supplied five ports there that are surge protected only. So clearly this UPS has at least general power delivery there and they're gonna be used for things like printers and stuff like that. But you having PoE devices, some of which have already got Wi-Fi on them, have already got Bluetooth on them, and they're already communicating with other devices in the environment without using standard network protocol, could have really benefited from a PoE output on this to continue supplying power to those, particularly when they're dotted around for like access and things like that. Another criticism, which I'm sure will be ironed out over time, and may well by the time you're watching this already be ironed out, and that is the level of control this affords me to the connected UPS devices. I get the UPS by its very nature, and it's kind of by design, to be about powering down devices safely so they're not adver adversely impacted by immediate power failure, but a lot of more modern UPS devices right now when they do integrate with more complicated and smart systems, can generally interpret when they get that UPS signal saying that the power is out of the building and now running on battery power, some devices like third party NAS systems and even third party switches actually have UPS configuration options on their side that allow the system to stay on for a given period of time. Either that the battery sends a signal that it's down to say 5% to auto shut down, or just say I want to maintain connectivity on something like a switch or a router for 15, maybe 20 minutes. Again, very dependent on the power being delivered by the UPS. But it allowed me to pair with other devices like NAS devices, like switch devices, but it didn't really give me much in the way of configuration to say I want it to run for a certain period of time or to power down at a certain percentage point. Now again, this may be ironed out in an update in the near future, and if that happens before this review, I'll remove it from this video, but at least for now, at launch, that doesn't seem to be a configuration feature available. And another minor grievance, again, it's another one, I'm sure it's gonna get ironed out over time, just like they did eventually with the NAS, there's only one power output version of this available at launch. They didn't roll out a series or a range at 150, 300, 600, and 1200 watt. They went ahead and just went with a single desktop profile there. Again, maybe this is the future and they've got a whole range, but I just thought it was worth touching on that, at least at the launch day. Unless you live in an area where power is intermittent, you suffer things like brownouts, or you generally have got a much deeper, deeper necessity for your UPS's feature set, this probably won't apply to you unless you fall into that category, but this does not have pure sine wave support. Again, as they extend the range, they've already said that they're gonna you know, go down that road, but this device here uses simulated sine wave. What that means is that the general 
kind of consistent power delivery that systems generally have is, you know, when you can have systems where if they get even the slight modulation in the power delivery, it can be detrimental to them. Again, it's a very small percentage of the device that can be affected by that uh, if the power delivery is not pure and consistent. That's why users that are concerned about those sort of things will always take stock in a device having pure sine wave support. This doesn't. Other devices uh, from Unify are going to have that feature of facility, but it generally adds around 10 to you know, up to 25% on the price tag of devices that have that. So Unify have clearly gone, again, cost effective with this first entry, dipping a toe into the market, but it's just something to touch on there that if you have very, very specific or very, very, let's say, finickety power demand for your UPS in your local network there, that might be something to keep an eye on. And another thing that those die-hard UPS buyers that take this stuff extraordinarily seriously will probably not be impressed with on this is that this doesn't arrive with lithium-ion batteries there. It uses lead acid inside for its battery. Yes, it's removable. We've touched on that earlier on. And, you know, it's easier to replace. It definitely keeps these things more affordable. But there are users out there that prefer lithium-ion because, one, it lasts longer in terms of its battery life there. And it charges a lot quicker than um, acid batteries like this. So do keep that in mind. There's a reason this is cost effective in the price point. It is, again, Unify say they are gonna be fleshing out the portfolio. That's another reason why I was kind of surprised that although they are rolling out the desktop and the rack mount client there uh, for UPS, I'm surprised they didn't provide for those that take this sort of thing really, really seriously, a kind of pro and non-pro rather than rack mount desktop of largely the same thing. Bottom line, if you're running a Unify network and you were looking for a cost-effective UPS, this kind of ticks a lot of boxes. And although it is still very much a cost-effective UPS, it still does the job and is natively applicable to Unify devices there with ease. Now, in the sense of the third party, if you're not running a Unify setup, although you can take advantage of this and some of the smart features might not be good enough for you without taking advantage of things like uh, NUT protocol there, or that you just want to be able to manually shut things down, this will do the job, but I wouldn't really recommend it. It is very much designed to exist within a Unify network. Um, things like the missing USB connectivity there, I think is a bit of a missed opportunity. And maybe as Unify branch out into their connectivity with USB on NAS devices, fingers crossed, then maybe that utility will arrive in the rest of the portfolio. And having this as a cost-effective entry, knowing why that is, and understanding where what you get and what you don't get at a price point, I think are going to be very important to whether you want to consider this or hold out for Unify to expand the portfolio for something a little bit more better suited to your network needs there. I don't think APC should be worried yet, frankly, because this is a Unify uh, UPS for a Unify audience. But heck, within the last week, even Ugreen launched their own NAS UPS, this tiny little device here, that is specifically designed for their ecosystem. But outside of that, people are not going to find this that useful. And plenty of people came out in the comments to criticise this in terms of it being UPS and not thinking about it as a vertically integrated product. That's what this is. This is vertical integration of the rest of the Unify ecosystem and now rolling in a UPS. And for that, I've got to applaud them. It's not the most exciting UPS, and I'm aware what a contradiction in terms of that sentence is, but it still does the job. And ultimately, that's what a UPS is for, to do the damn job. And for that, it does its job. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. If you want to get hold of one of these, you'll be doing the channel a massive favor if you use the links in the description description to do so. Only do it if you found the video helpful, but using those links results in anything you're purchasing, getting a small commission, coming back to me and Eddie here at NAS Compares. It's just us doing what we do, but don't do it unless you found the video helpful there. It doesn't cost you any extra, but it also allows you to passively support creators like me and Eddie at NAS Compares. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.